I said no more face painting. And as you can tell, this is clearly not my face. Because we watched Season 6, Episode 22, The Face Painter. <laughs> So, Katie. Yes, hello. How'd you like the face painter? I'm still smiling. I like this episode. Mm. You, you, you laughed a lot at David Putty. Yes. Mm. I also laughed at Kramer. Mm-hmm. It was a good episode. There you Although, go. okay, we'll we'll get into it. Sure. I, I have a caveat. Mm-hmm. Should I just say the caveat? You, you, you you're you're on drugs. Uh, no, it, no. I am instantly bored by any story with a monkey. Mm. So when I read the synopsis, when I was writing it down at the beginning, I'm like, uh, a monkey is in this? <laughs> what do you have against monkeys? <laughs> I just think they're a cop-out plot device. Mm. Uh, monkey on Friends. Like, it's not funny. Okay. So the face banter was written by Larry David and Fred Stoller. It was directed by Andy Ackerman, and it aired on May 11th, 1995. Vulture.com ranked it as the 49th best episode. Mm-hmm. Screen Crush ranked it as the 137th best episode. What? And IMDb had it coming in at a quite reasonable 68th. So we don't... We- like, we're still going to look up Screen Crush, but we don't give it any weight because the Screen Crush guy didn't watch anything. Well, he I, I assume he's watched all of the episodes, but he didn't watch them to re-rank them. Yeah. He just, like, went off of memory. So he doesn't mention George's storyline. Hmm. Uh, he doesn't, doesn't mention anything about Kramer and the monkey. He's all just like, David Putty went to a game with his face painted. If that's the only thing you can remember from it, and you're not watching it to see how funny it was. I can see you being like, oh, that's like a gimmick. You know, this this mm-hmm. minor character that just showed up mm-hmm. is weird. So not a good episode. Vulture.com uh, mentioned George having only told a dog, I love you, <laughs> yes. which they said was hilarious, sad, and illuminating all at once. Said so you've never said I love you? Said it to a dog once. No, the way he, he the way he said it was so perfect. Jerry goes, "You've never said it." He goes, "Once to a dog." It licked itself and left the room. <laughs> so, y- did you like this episode? Yeah, there. The, uh, I I think I mean Putty is is a pretty iconic uh, guest character or secondary character, whatever you want to call him. And I think this is like the first episode where he really like He's got some zingers. Yeah, he he really like comes into his own. Mm-hmm. So sure, yeah, I like it. I like hockey. <laughs> I always find it like I feel like a lot of series shoehorn a hockey episode in uh, every once in a while. There's like a Friends where they go to a hockey game once, never mention hockey ever again. Really, there's a how I met your mother episode where they go to a hockey game. Never really mentioned it ever again. We get a Seinfeld where it's like, Oh, we got to, we, we, you want to go to the game tonight? You want to go on Friday? Like we got to, we're, we're huge fans of hockey for one week, apparently. No, but they have definitely mentioned the Rangers before. Sure. Yeah. So I, I buy that all of them are hockey fans, at least I would say less of a fan than you and I are, but like, the same way that I am a CFL football fan, which I really like it, but I don't super pay attention to it. But if someone said, do you want to go to a CFL football game? I will say yes, 100%. Who won the Grey Cup? The this- Montreal Alouettes. When did they win it? Like two weeks ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I was following our friend Tom's Instagram. <laughs> there you go. Let's uh, throw it back to last week to see if I remember this episode. Gotta go and support the team. So? How'd I do? I think you nailed it. Gotta support the team, man. I think that's all you said. Probably. So here's a question. Mm -hmm. 
have you or would you ever paint your face? You, you've taken a picture of me with my face painted. You've taken multiple pictures of me. I can think of at least two occasions where my face was painted. For hockey? No. For, for what? Uh, at my company's family. Uh, no, that's different. Uh, that doesn't count. Halloween, when you painted cat eyes on my eyelids. That was iconic. No, so the, the, the company picnic thing does not count. You let our kid draw on your face, which was very patient and nice of you. That does, that's not the same thing. You didn't, you weren't going to a sporting event and said, I gotta support the team. No, I wouldn't. And paint your face. It's not, it's not really my style. I also wouldn't paint a D on my chest. You're you're not one of the woo guys? No. Mm. Those were some hairy gents. They aren't naturally hairless, if that's what you were expecting. <laughs> but there's variation. But it was like thick. It's hard to paint into thick chest hair. It is hard. You, you, you'd think that they would like shave first and then paint. Well, you, like, you can see that Putty shaves his neck. You could just go all the way down for for the D? All the way down? For the D? De- D for <laughs> devils, Derek. Come on. Get your mind out of the gutter. Does that shaving go all the way down? <laughs> so who are the guest stars? Uh, so returning guest star, Patrick Warburton, played David Putty. We also had Katie Silverstone playing Sienna. She was from The Drew Carey Show. The Divine Secrets of the Aya Sisterhood, and Letters from a Killer. Wasn't a, another recent guest star from the Drew Carey show? Uh, yeah. Uh, George's girlfriend who didn't care yeah. about physical appearances. Like back-to-back girlfriends or Drew Carey mm. show actresses. I think both of this was pre-Drew Carey show. Oh. We had Mark DiCarlo. He was from Boff's The Bear Show. The Adventures of Jimmy Neutron, and Saving Ryan's Privates. Is that a porno? I don't know. It's a short movie from 1998. Who did he play in this episode? Oh, uh, I didn't write down his character's name. He was the, <laughs> he was the guy they got the tickets from. Alec Berg. Alec Berg, yes. Uh, and then we had Perino Mascarino, <laughs> who played... Father Hernandez. He was from Tears of the Sun, Down Periscope, and The Gangster Chronicles. Hmm. I thought Alec Berg was the guy from Mad About You. Definitely looks like the guy from Mad About You. Uh, Paul Paul Reiser. Reiser. Not Rudd. Not Sheer. (laughs) So I'll read the synopsis. Putty's hockey fandom unnerves Elaine and an unsuspecting priest. George tries to tell his girlfriend he loves her. Kramer feuds with a chimpanzee. He doesn't really try to tell his girlfriend. He tells his girlfriend. Mm, Yep. So the stand-up starts. Jerry's talking about if you're at the level where you're getting a monkey as a pet, you might as well just have kids. Do you agree? (sighs) Anybody with an exotic pet is a little weird. Yes. Okay, where's the needle on exotic like, fine, dog, cap, hamster, fish, bird. Bird is a little weird. I, I think maybe there's, like, levels to this. And there's, like, <laughs> like level zero is, like, uh, that. Level one is bird, any type of, like, lizard. Yeah. reptiles. Uh, and then anything beyond that. <laughs> you're, you got a miniature pony at home, you're weird. You got a monkey at home, you're weird. Are you coming for Arnold Schwarzenegger and his miniature ponies? Mm. <laughs> I have a donkey and a pony. <laughs> yeah, he's weird. He's he's a, he's he's a maniac. What are you talking about? What about what a backyard chicken? Is that really, is that a pet? That I mean, that's a little different. It's a useful pet, and it's not in your house. <laughs> if you have a chicken in your house, then yeah, you're that, <laughs> come on. You need to talk to someone. Raccoon. One hundred percent. You you definitely should be talking to many people and probably on medication. Wouldn't a raccoon be just such a delight? No, Jesus Christ, no. A fat fuzzy raccoon with little human hands. 
raccoon. I want to I want to point out the book on this bookshelf, which it, I purchased. You got it from the trash. No, I purchased it from a store. I thought it was from the little library. Called Raccoons Are the Brightest People by that, Sterling North. He needs professional help. <laughs> that is a sequel to a previous book he wrote about his childhood pet raccoon. And clearly needs professional help. I didn't actually read the book. It was terrible. I just looked at all the pictures. Uh, fact check. Mm-hmm. Were monkeys the first astronauts? Oh, no. They sent up smaller stuff first. Yeah. There's Laika. Did Laika go before monkeys? I think so. I think but Laika was the first animal in space. No, they sent up worms and bugs. Oh, and those stuff. don't count. They probably sent rats before Laika. Mm. That made me think so of- So what was Laika then? The first dog in space? There, we're going to fact check this later, but like maybe like it wasn't the first animal in space. Maybe it was the first animal in orbit or mm. something. I don't know. Poor Laika. Still up there. <laughs> this made me think of the Simpsons episode where they're at NASA and they're like, we need to tell people that the monkeys mm-hmm. we sent to space came back super smart. No, I don't think we'll be doing that. <laughs> so George has enthralled this woman with talk of toilet paper. He's found somebody who cares about his musings. Mm. I think that's important. It's important to have somebody think you're interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hanging on your every word. Talking about bog roll. <laughs> Has toilet paper changed? I mean, Jerry and Elaine claim it has changed a lot. Softer, more sheets. More sheets per roll, different colors. You're not supposed to get colored toilet paper, right? It's no, bad I think, for your bunghole. I think colored toilet paper is not available anymore. Because mm, it was bad for your bunghole? Probably. Um, I've Was probably talked bunghole about, without an explicit warning? <laughs> I've already sworn. Um I, I, I've been pretty sure that I talked about uh, for a while. We bought like a, a a pack of like white swan premium toilet paper, and it was like wiping your ass with a duvet. <laughs> I don't think they had that in the the seventies. That's for sure. No, toilet paper has gotten a lot better. There's three and four ply now. Mm-hmm. They used to think two ply was luxury. Sure, yeah. Maybe maybe we'll just keep going. There's like bamboo paper now. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be really soft and renewable, but not cheaper. Mm. What do we like? Royale? No. The lady. What's the lady toilet paper? Cottonell? Yeah. That's Charmin? It. No. Cottonell. What's the kittens? Royale. Mm. <laughs> Folks, let us know. Are you uh are you a Charmin household? Are you uh crapping into Cottonelle? You don't poop into the toilet paper. You're using it wrong. Oh, I forgot about our goddamn conversation about how to wipe your butt. So my mind is blown because I've known you for what? How many years? Fifteen years? I, I think it's pretty rare that in my uh late thirties I changed how I wipe my butt. Okay, explain. How do you wipe your butt now? How did you wipe your butt before? No, it's not funny. This is, no, I don't want to talk about this. Because you're doing it wrong. No, I I switched from a scruncher to a folder. I think. Okay, that's fine, but that's not what I'm talking about. You are a stander. You gotta get back there. It's so much easier. No, it's not. You're standing and you're you're shutting the doors. You're you're closing the the gate. No, because you're bent over. What? That's so awkward. You could you could bend over on the can. The I, toilet is in the way. <laughs> Maybe it's because your arms are so muscly, you can't like maneuver them behind your back. So the bus boy doesn't care about the soup. <laughs> People don't even know what I cut out of this conversation. <laughs> okay, what's going on next week? Uh, so the bus boy doesn't like the soup, or uh, doesn't care if you compliment the soup. Does anyone really like if your waiter came back and you do they ask you how was it? They're, are they listening or are they just are like no 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 and they take your stuff away? I think only if it's bad. Yeah. So 
Elaine and Jerry see Alec Berg. He's got a good John Houseman name. Mm. Did you understand this reference? Nope. Don't know who John Houseman is. He's an Academy Award winner. Mm. He's been in a ton of stuff. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't find a connection. Like, was he on a game show where he said a lot of people's names or something? And a Reddit post explained it. He, the way that Jerry says it is the way that he is like a character of the way, mm. caricature of the way he talks. And so it's just a like super obscure reference to how some actor talks. Okay. So there you go. Um. So Jerry's lamenting about, he said, it's like, uh, people that get on a plane with nothing to read. Nitwits that get on a plane with nothing to read. Who from this episode do you think will be getting on a plane with nothing to read? George. No. Jerry? No. Elaine? No. <laughs> Kramer? None taken. No. <laughs> Putty? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, he's a bit of a nitwit, so. There you go. Yeah. You know why I like Putty so much? Because Elaine is happy. Oh, is she? Well, listen, later on, she tries to break up with him. Mm -hmm. And I admired how she didn't make up some excuse Mm. or whatever she said. She didn't give him the, it's not you, it's me. Yeah. She said, I don't think we should see each other. The face painting is weirding me out. And he says, okay, I won't do it. She's like, great. What what direct it, and, and, and perfect communication? Is it uh, somewhat telling, though, that she immediately was like, I have to break up with him. She can't be like, she can't have a conversation, a, a pre-breakup conversation about the face paint. I think the face paint is the, the top of the pyramid of his, like, behaviors. Like, why can't dip be a meal? You know, just his mm. general mannerisms. I don't get stuff like that. <laughs> that uh, that she's seeing sort of like, okay, this guy's kind of a nitwit. Mm. So I'm just going to edit here. But then he you know, makes his gesture, a half gesture. He's not going to paint his face. Is that a half gesture or is that the whole gesture of, just, just, just your, <laughs> of what he promised to do? I guess it is the entirety of what he promised to do. But the adjacent activity of painting his chest, if he was not a nitwit, he would know that she would not approve. But I think he's fulfilling his contract. <laughs> she didn't say, I didn't like how you acted at the game. No, Example, he was being pretty paint. boorish and standing up yeah. and banging on the glass. So like if, a- if that had like if that had been the problem. Yeah. Why is she standing in Jerry's apartment bouncing a ball? It's weird. They're talking to each other like 30 feet away. You think like after six seasons, they're like, okay, you, you talk to them and they're like, do this all the time. I'm like, ah, you, just do whatever you want. You can't just be sitting on the couch. Yeah. You gotta do something. There was like a weird back to back scene in Jerry's apartment where like then Kramer left and came back and it was like they needed an intermediate scene to like break this up that they didn't have. Oh, okay. I don't know. So she's bouncing the ball. George comes in well, with flowers. She's all excited and he slides them away. Mm. Not for Elaine. He flops onto the couch like a baby with his, his legs up. Legs up. He's just so pleased and content. <laughs> so I'm guessing we don't see Sienna ever again. I don't believe so. Hmm. Poor George. They did it's- film a scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second time when he says, I love you, where she reciprocates, and then he asks her to marry him. Right then? Right then. Oh. How preposterous to to ask someone to marry you so soon into the relationship. How many dates have they been on? Three? It's George's style, I guess. When do they bring up Diane Fossey? Has Kramer already gone to a zoo at this point? Um, no, I don't think so. It was, it was kind of after it was, it was when George had is in Jerry's apartment and he's like, um, he's going to tell her that I love her. And then they say like, you don't get that return. That's a pretty big matzo ball hanging out there. And then Kramer's going to go to the zoo and he talks about Diane Fossey going with the gorillas. Okay. 
Is she a real person or is this a play on Jane? Good all. She's a real person. Um, there were three gorilla g- girls. Uh, that gorilla literally, girls? That's literally what they were called. They were called the the trimates. There's a play on primates? Yeah. So they each studied a different monkey. I don't know the difference, but Diane Fossey was a real person. Monkey or gorilla? I don't know the difference. Diane Fossey was murdered. By a gorilla? Nope. Well, unless a gorilla can wield a machete. I don't see how they wouldn't be able to. But they, they have opposable her, thumbs, Katie. They accepted her into their society. Hmm. She was murdered in her, like, lodging. Oh, no. Uh, and it hasn't been solved. Yikes. Yeah. I, I just tuned out all the monkey stuff. Yeah, I mean, they ask Kramer to go and apologize to the monkey, which apparently... Uh, Fred Stoller, like when he was a child at the zoo, he saw people throwing rocks at the monkey and the zookeeper made the people throwing rocks <laughs> verbally apologize to the monkeys as punishment. <laughs> so when he's in the zookeeper's office, my thoughts were like, man, the set deck had to get so many monkey pictures for this office. Mm-hmm. But also there's a whiteboard with like info about each chimp or whatever. There's Barry. Mm-hmm. Dolly, mm-hmm. Jody, mm-hmm. and then a really long name I couldn't read. I think it's Fortescue. Okay. Or Flintstone. <laughs> was it my rating that uh, <laughs> was up there? <laughs> yeah. So George has told Sienna that he loves her. She says, I'm hungry. Let's get something to eat. And then in the zookeeper's office, Kramer weirdly as she's walking out, says, my friend really likes you. Mm. And uh, a zookeeper reveals that she's kind of deaf in her left ear. So George is like, this is like Superman turning, reversing the rotation of the earth. Mm -hmm. He's going to do it again. Against his better judgment or against Jerry's better judgment. Gets a second chance to right this wrong. And basically she says, yeah, I heard you the first time. Yo. Oh, yeah, there was a funeral in this episode? Yeah, I was going to talk about that. So after um, having gone to the hockey game, uh, I guess they've established that it's the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, and Kramer and Jerry would like to go to the, the Friday night game. But they didn't do the next day thank you. Yeah. So uh, the day of the funeral, they don't have tickets yet. And Kramer comes in. He's like, you know, did, did you see him at the funeral? And Jerry says, ah, there's 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 five hours until the game. So this was a pre-2 p.m. funeral. The game's at 7 p.m. So my experience with funerals is there's visitations in the evening, and then funerals are like in the morning, early afternoon. Mm. It did look like nighttime when they were in mm-hmm. the funeral home. But if you're going to bury someone, it's during the day. Mm. So they would have a service like at 11 o'clock or something. Right. What do you think about the day after thank you? Having never really received, like, tickets from someone, I don't know what I would do. I mean, if you want the Friday tickets, this is the perfect opportunity. The day after you call, you know, oh, thanks for those tickets. It was so great. Oh, yeah. And then, like, you, like, you gotta suck if your up. plan is to get it, like. Yeah. Jerry ooh. just assumes that, you know, tickets will He's fall into a his lap. And terrible person. Kramer says he's trying to get Jerry to call. Alec Berg, he says, if you don't want to be part of society, get in your car and move to the east side. Apparently, the original line in the script was uh, some fictional cu- uh, city from Superman. Oh. And then they changed it to <laughs> east side because <laughs> nobody knew what they were talking about. <laughs> it was like Komoto. When Putty painted his face, it wasn't what I was expecting I didn't expect green, I guess, because it's not in their colors. Not anymore. What? New York. The New Jersey Devils used to have green in their colors. Really? Yes. What part of the... It was red and green. Oh. Yeah. I think their third jersey might now be that color scheme. Hmm. Um, Peter Warburton grew up a Los Angeles Kings fan, but then after this episode, his, like, Allegiances were <laughs> were mixed. He's appeared at multiple Devils games in uh, makeup, 
with a D painted on his chest. <laughs> uh, he's dropped a puck. Um, and in 2019, the New Jersey Devils did a uh, putty bobblehead giveaway. Oh, I love this. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go home and get ready for the game. I'll come back. We'll make out. Painted my face. <laughs> I think we just laughed at his delivery. It didn't matter mm-hmm. what he said. So in the 1993, so this episode aired in May 11th of 1995. In the 1993-1994 uh, NHL season, the New York Rangers met the New Jersey Devils in the semi, the Eastern semifinals where the Rangers went on after winning 4-3 to lose eventually to the Vancouver Canucks. Mm. Um. The closest uh, date to May 11th would have been May 15th, um, where I think the Rangers lost in double double overtime. On the night of May 11th, 1995, the Rangers were playing the Pittsburgh Penguins in the second round of the Mm. playoffs, where they lost 7-3 to go on and lose the series 4-1. Uh, Putty was wearing a Martin Brodeur jersey, mm-hmm. uh, number 30. Um, Martin Brodeur in August of 1995 married his wife um, in the year 2003. It came out that they were getting divorced due to Martin Brodeur having had an affair with his sister-in-law. Ah, I remember that. living with them at the time to be a nanny to their four children. Yikes. I don't know if you remember about this, but uh, you know, tangentially related. Like we're we're, we're like three tangents deep now. Yeah. Uh, today, Corey Perry was put on unconditional waivers by the NHL team from Chicago uh, for the purposes of terminating his contract due to him uh, banging uh, Connor Bedard's mom. Mom. Well, they're closer in age. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> just a visceral reaction. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sound bite. <laughs> but it, uh, 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 like, how, how, what the, business is 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 the NHL's? What Connor Bedard's mom gets up to? That's what I want to know. Uh, I mean, the NHL team from Chicago, long history of being, you know, super uh, scandalous. And it's like, ah, all those are fine. We'll keep, we'll keep going with those. <laughs> Don't. You bang our new superstars, sex mom. mom and adults, get, get out of here. Out of here. Uh, but also, like, way to ruin your new superstars, uh, like, like NHL rookie season. Like, mm. how how much circus do you need around this guy that's going to be the face of your franchise? Yeah. Um, you bring a guy in who's supposed to like mentor the young kids, and oh boy, did he do some mentoring? Mm. Allegedly. Well, there was the whole. Shane Corson, uh, Darcy Tucker, Darcy Tucker, yeah, business, and Alex McGillney's wife was involved. Mm-hmm. Is that the same story, or am I thinking of two different stories? Um, I was it was a McGillney's wife, Shane Corson and McGillney's wife. I think so. Um, it didn't. Uh, there was another scandal with the Flames. This is a terrible. I can't remember the players. <laughs> this is all the hockey tea. The hockey wags. Mm-hmm. Well, Sean Avery and Dion Phaneuf. Mm-hmm. Enough said. Yeah. I was never a fan of Dion Phaneuf until I found out he went to the bagel place that we like. I was like, ah, oh, he's just like us. <laughs> hockey players. <laughs> it's like they go grocery shopping, too. <laughs> Okay, and then, uh, you know, it all wraps up as you'd expect. And Elaine goes to visit the uh, priest that hasn't left the basement of the church. And the man who, the other priest is like, ah, it finally stopped raining. And Elaine comes in in her white raincoat with her curly hair. Who has a white raincoat? Who, what adult wears a poncho mm-hmm. that you didn't buy at a sporting event that looks like a trash bag? And she stands in the sunlight. He says, Ah, Madonna, take me, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Is that a religious thing? I'm not familiar. I mean, I thought she came in looking angelic. Mm -hmm. 
but he sees the angel of death. I don't know. I'm not religious. I think death as the skeleton guy with the sickle and the black robe. That's who comes to take you away. Yes. Yeah. I was having, I was putting our daughter to bed the other night and she mentioned soul. And I said to her, oh, what, what's a soul? Hmm. And she told me it's the part of your body that leaves you when you die and goes to heaven. And I said, oh, what's oh. heaven? Okay. And she said, heaven is where you go. No, so uh, it's the part of the body that leaves when you become a ghost. If you're a good person, if you're a bad person, you go to heaven. And in heaven, they send you to hell to learn how to be good <laughs> so that you can go back to heaven where you get whatever you want. Oh, that's very complicated. It was very, uh, you know, <laughs> rehabilitation. Um, Man, where did she get this stuff? Got a new uh, religion going. So what's on the tap for next week? The understudy. Oh, yeah. Big guest star in this one. Return of Rochelle Rochelle. My boot came untied. You have some corrections. So I have some corrections. We were talking about, for some reason, a tangent about Star Wars Day, May the 4th. Okay. Uh, would it surprise you that Margaret Thatcher started it? Yep. Uh, well, she didn't. But there's a no- <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that uh, Albert Einstein was the first person to make a peanut butter and jam sandwich? Well, he isn't. But it's amazing that I'm walking through the ruins of the very first city. <laughs> because I'm not. <laughs> okay, there's a note on her wiki page that the Conservative Party said it in an advertisement after she won the election on May 4th, 1979. But nobody remembers this. Oh, okay. So if it happened, it did not make it into the zeitgeist, but somebody put it on her wiki page. Apparently, Chris Evans said it on the BBC okay. in, the, in the 90s. But then a Facebook group in 2008 uh, was started that was just, you know, those those – Things you could be a fan of. It was just like a page with nothing on it. Mm -hmm. And then in 2011, the Toronto Underground Cinema had the first Star Wars Day. There you go. Um, The original (laughs) Sith Lord. (laughs) We talked about Elf on the Shelf. Uh, A book came out in 2005 and there was a TV special in 2011. Mm. So it's not a tradition. It's just a a book and a toy. Do you remember when a woman at our old work did a human Elf on the Shelf one year and took pictures of herself around the office and then you had to figure out where it was. I remember, uh, I remember like them posting pictures of elf on the shelf every year. I mean, like, I think that was kind of my, I don't know if it was my first, like ever hearing of it, but it was like the first time where it was in my face. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know where this quote is from, but someone said, if you grow up thinking it's cool for the elves to watch, you would report back to Santa. Well, then it's cool for the NSA to watch me and report back to the government. Okay. We talked about Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah. Uh, he was in the Midwest. Oh, it wasn't. Uh, no. No. Mm. I can't remember where, honestly. I didn't look into how long it takes to smother someone because I didn't want to get on a list. Okie dokie. I still think it takes a really long time. I'll just cut that out. Well, bye. See you next week. Bye. For the season six finale. Oh, can't wait. Bye. Bye. Believe it or not, this is our podcast. Please subscribe at the end. If you subscribed, we would be happy. Please subscribe to us. Believe it or not, it's our podcast. Is that a Seinfeld reference?